Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel. So we'll be solving this problem shown on the screen here, and this is an equilibrium problem. So what we have going on is that we have these two cables, A, C, and B, C, that are tied together here at point C and loaded with the 660 newtons of force acting to the right. And we are tasked with determining the total tension in member AC and the total tension in member BC such that this whole system is in static equilibrium, meaning that all the forces in all directions are summing to be zero and it is not moving. So with most of these equilibrium type problems, a uh, very good first step to start in is to start drawing a free body diagram just to make a more simplistic view of the problem so that we can put on our angles, our dimensions, our known forces and our unknown forces, just so it's a little bit easier to see where our next steps should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing my coordinate system here of my X and Y, and I'm going to put point C right here in the middle of the origin because that's where all these members of known and unknown forces collide. They collide at point C. So that is my point of interest. So I'm going to throw on my known force of 660 newtons, <clears throat> which is acting to the right here at point C. And then the tensions in cables AC and BC need to be pulling back to the left here. Ooh. Need to be pulling back into the left here in order to cancel with that 660 newtons of force in order to keep it in equilibrium. So I'm gonna call this member AC, I'm gonna call its force FAC, and then very similarly for BC down here, FBC. Now, for this particular problem, we are given dimensions from point A to C and point B to C, and from both of those horizontally to point C. So what you can do is that you can actually find these angles in here if you want to using this, these dimensions, or you can use um, the dimensions themselves without trying to find any angles. It's basically using the ratios of uh, your rise over your run of that force. I believe the actual name for this method is called the triangle proportional method, but don't quote me on that. That's at least what I try to call it. So what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna throw on the dimensions here of the rise of the the rise over the run, of each force. So FAC has a total rise from point A to C of 1.4 meters, and then a horizontal distance of 2.25 meters. And then repeat that process for FBC, where once again, our horizontal is 2.25 meters, and then our vertical is the three meters. So we can utilize these two triangles for the slope of our forces, and we can utilize them instead of the angles. So I'm just gonna make them a little bit bigger over here so we can actually see this. So what we need to determine um, is the resultant for each of these, uh, the hypotenuse of each of those little triangles, which is very easy to do. You just take each leg, square it, and then add them together and square root them. So for the first one, this hypotenuse pops out to be 2.65 meters. And for the second one, once you square three, add it with 2.25 squared, and then you square root it, that hypotenuse pops out to be 3.75 meters. So those, so this is our completed free body diagram, everything that we need to solve this problem. So with equilibrium, after you've started your free body diagram and you've completed your free body diagram, if you realize um, or if you don't realize what your next steps are, um, typically with equilibrium problems, what you're going to do is that you're going to have to sum forces in a general direction. And this is a 2D problem. So our only directions that we have are X and Y. So what we can do is that we can just go ahead and write our equilibrium equations, our summation equations here of summing forces in the y, which everything in the y direction has to cancel and be zero. And then we can do the same process for the x, but let's just start with the y. So we're gonna take only the vertical directional forces and we're gonna take everything in the upward direction as positive inside this equation. So let's first start with our unknown FAC force. 
Since we are using the triangle proportional method, we are gonna be multiplying FAC by a ratio here. And that ratio will always have the hypotenuse of your triangle in the denominator. So 2.65 here. And then you have a choice of the 1.4 or the 2.25. Now, in the direction you're looking at, which we're looking at the Y, we want to use the direction that is in the Y for that particular force. So the 1.4 is in the Y, and that's what we're looking at is the vertical direction here. So that's my ratio of 1.4 over 2.65 FAC. And that tells us how much of that cable force actually translates into the vertical direction using the slope method um, for these dimensional forces or these dimensions. And then we have FBC. Well, its component, since it's going in the downward left direction, its component will be going downward, just like the FAC, its component was, or its components in the upward direction. So it's positive because it's going up into the left. FBC is going down into the left. So its component will be going downward. And we are taking up as positive here. So minus FBC. And it's going to be the same type of method here. We're going to put the hypotenuse in the denominator, 3.75. And we're going to use the 3 because the 3 is measuring vertically, which we are looking at vertical forces here only. The 660 newtons is purely in the x, so it does not have anything in the y direction. So that's our equation for our y direction. Well, looking at this, we have one equation with two unknowns of FAC and FBC. Can't solve that. Anytime this happens where you cannot solve a direct equilibrium equation, um, you just go to your next one. So for instance, we just did the Y. Can't solve for anything. So let's go to the X and see if we can solve for anything there. So for the X direction, I'm going to take everything to the right as positive. And once again, since we're in equilibrium, everything has to cancel and be zero in this direction. So same kind or very similar type of procedure here in writing this equation. I'm going to take my unknown FAC first. Its component is up and to the left. So its horizontal component will be acting left. And we're taking right as positive. So left will be negative. For this ratio, once again, it's going to be the hypotenuse in the denominator always. And then you're going to use the dimension that is measuring in the horizontal direction, which is the 2.25. And then we're going to do the same process for FBC. Well, FBC is down and to the left, so its component will be going left. Since we're taking right as positive, this will be minus. Hypotenuse of the measurement of the little triangle will go in the denominator, 3.75. And then we are going to take our horizontal dimension for that triangle because we're looking at the X direction, which is horizontal which is 2.25. Just so happens that both of them are 2.25 in the horizontal direction. And then we also have this 660 Newtons and it'll be going to the right. So it's positive 660 Newtons is equal to zero. So I really don't need my uh, free body diagram anymore once I have completed my two equilibrium equations here because I've translated my picture into a free body diagram and then my free body diagram into these two equilibrium equations. Now, looking at the X equation, can't solve anything by itself. Same thing for the Y. But if we look at them both, we have two equations with two unknowns and we can solve for either FAC or FBC at the, at the beginning here. So you're just going to take one of the equations and you're going to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other variable. So for instance, let's just go ahead and let's start with looking at the y equation. So from our summation of y equation, I am just going to take FBC and throw it on the right side so that it is positive. So I have FAC times 1.4 over 2.65 is equal to FBC which is 3 over 3.75. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can take this ratio that was with FAC 
and I can take it over and divide everything on this right side. But let's first off and get these ratios in decimal form. So 1.4 divided by 2.65, that gives me 0 0.528 times FAC. And then 3 divided by 3.75 gives me 0 0.8 times FBC. So if I take the 0 0.228 and divide everything through here, take it to the other side, I have 0 0.8 times FBC all over 0 0.528 which 0 0.8 divided by 0 0.528 gives me 1.52 FBC. So this tells me how much of FBC will equal FAC. So what I can do, since I've used the Y equation, I can take this value and plug it into my other equation, my X equation, in terms of FAC, because this is what FAC equals. And then once I do that, this term, the first term of the X equation will be in terms of FBC. The second one's in FBC. And that is the only unknown inside the X equation now is FBC. So let's scroll a little bit here. <clears throat> so going to my X equation, Plugging in 1.25 FBC into FAC up here, I have a minus. Don't forget the minus signs. That's usually where a lot of mistakes are made. So I have minus 1.52 FBC times that ratio of 2.25 over 2.65 minus FBC times its original ratio as shown. Let's erase that real quick. If it wants to erase, there we go. And that is three point, oh, changing color, of course. <laughs> and then plus the 660 equal to zero. All right, so with this equation, the only thing I have here is FBC. Everything else is in terms of FBC, so I can actually solve for this. Just going to have to do a little bit of math here to get all these variables and everything solved down to easier numbers to use. So 1.52 times the ratio of 2.25 over 2.65 gives me minus 1.29 FBC. And then 2.25 over 3.75 gives me 0 0.6 FBC and then plus 660 equal to zero. So I'm gonna combine like terms here of the minus 1.2 and the 0 0.6, and I'm gonna take the 660 to the opposite side. So minus 1.92 minus off 0 0.6 gives me a minus 1.89 FBC, and then minus 660 when I take it to the other side. So FBC will be minus 660 over minus 1.98, and this gives me 349.2 Newtons in that general downward left direction. <clears throat> so there's one of my answers. And what I can do is that I already have FAC in terms of FBC, so I can take this value here of the 349.2 and plug it into this equation and I can get what FAC is. So FAC is 1.52 FBC. So 1.52 times 349.2 Newtons gives me a total of 530.78 Newtons and that general upward left direction. So those are the two forces that we are tasked with finding, the two tensions in each cable. Um, with equilibrium problems, there's always a way to double check your answers to make sure that you are correct. And I advise that you would do this if you're not 100% confident and just to double check your work. What you can do is that you can take both of those values that we just found of the 349 and the 5, 530, take them back and plug them into your equilibrium equations 
to your original equilibrium equations to make sure that it does equal zero. If it doesn't come out to be zero or very, very, very close to zero, just due to rounding, then you've done something wrong somewhere. You may have miscalculated something or your original equilibrium equations are incorrect. So it's always a good idea to double check your work here. So if I just check the work here, and this is plugging into the uh, FX equation, I would have minus my FAC, which is 530.78, times the ratio of 2.25 over 2.65, minus FBC, which is 349.2, times its ratio of 2.25 over 3.75, plus 660 newtons, and it comes out to be minus 0 0.18, which is very, very close to zero, considering how large these values are. We have 349, 530, 660. So the ratio of this 0 0.18 over these large values is very, very, very small. And this difference right here is just due to rounding at, from our answers. That's it. As long as it's in the ballpark and close to zero, you're fine. Now, if this came out to be like, for instance, 30 Newtons or 40 Newtons, well, that means I was a really bad rounder, but it's still relatively close. Maybe there's an error somewhere. Maybe you rounded incorrectly. You calculated something wrong. But if it's like 100 Newtons, you know that something is terribly wrong. So that's how you solve that particular problem. That's how you would solve most equilibrium problems, general equilibrium problems. So I hope this was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved like of this variety and like this, uh, please check out other videos on our channel. Um, and thank you. And I hope you have a great day.